Hello, welcome back to the RCT channel for pretty much the penultimate episode of Season 1 of our FC25 Manchester City career mode. In the last episode, we completed our Premier League title win with an 8-point clear gap over second place Spurs. Arsenal United make up the top four with Liverpool, Chelsea and Villa and Newcastle missing out. Relegated was Ipswich, Forest and Everton. Into the Emirates FA Cup, also the final episode, the last episode, where we won against Arsenal by two goals to one, completing the domestic double, the Premier League and the FA Cup under our wing. And now into the European competitions, however, because in the Europa Conference League, Parthenaikos lost 2 1 to Purity in the final, despite that side actually, Parthenaikos, they beat Chelsea in the semi finals on the way there. Purity are beating Real Betis. On to the UEFA Europa League, FC Porto, the side from Portugal, beat Galatasaray in the final. Both sides knocking out a fellow Portuguese side in Braga and also Ukraine side Dynamo Kiev. But it's a chance for Manchester City in the penultimate episode today to win the Champions League, to complete our task, our aim, our big, big aim of this season to win the treble. Manchester City versus Atletico Madrid in the Champions League final. On the way to the final, Atleti knock out Sporting. We've got all the way to the semi-final. Congratulations to them. Manchester City knock out Arsenal. This is the big one. After this, we'll get into all the results of around the league, the stats and so on. And maybe we'll get into the end of season awards as well. And Manchester City versus Atletico Madrid. This is how season one will end. Well, this is how uh, Diego Simeone's side line up. Diego Simeone is certainly the worst sort of manager. There's worst side I could think about facing. A defensive side, you want to sit back and play a counter-attacking football. We're going to come up against one of our former players in Julian Alvarez, who starts, apparently, is expected to start in behind Sawoff in this 3-4-2-1 formation. They're going to play defensive without a doubt. They are going to try and catch on the counter. Simeone against Pep Guardiola has had some pretty bad ends for Pep Guardiola in the past, but can this time Manchester City come out on top against a good Aleti side that are clearly back in the business of frustrating oppositions, playing counter-attacking football, being defensively solid and making it all the way to the Champions League final. Well, this is the Manchester City side for the Champions League final with Pep Guardiola making big changes in his starting 11. Edison, our goalkeeper, who has been the mainstay throughout the season, starts and goal, one of our players this evening, actually, believe with some of the saves he's made. It's going to be a back four of Joshua Vardiol, Ruben Diaz, Manu Akanji, and also Rico Lewis. I expected, I was thinking about playing Nathan Ake, but Lewis had a really good season starts in there. We're not going to play playing against a, defense, uh, a side that's going to come out as much. They're going to be more defensive sides than Lewis starts. We're going to have to try and break them down. Alan Varela starts the midfield, the new signing has been brilliant since January with Ilkay Gundogan, an experienced player, and captain Kevin De Bruyne. On the right is Bernardo Silva, on the left is Phil Fone, so no Grealish, no Doku, no Savinho, all three options off the bench. And of course, City's big man, the 92 rated Dylan Carlin, will start up top. On the bench is Kyogo Fidiashi, has options to make a difference with Savinho, Doku, and Jack Grealish, Nathan Ake, John Stone, Mateo Kovacic, Mateus Nunes, and also Stefan Ortega. This is the biggest game of the series, and this is a chance to complete our aims of this series. This season one, anyway, is to win the treble. So there is the stadium today. Sanderson Park is where the Champions League final will be played. The Manchester City fans have arrived for their third final uh, in the Champions League. The third final, City have won one and lost one. We're looking to try and change that 50% record. Now let's go and rid the side from the capital of Spain here as well for this big one. Well, Manchester City's TIFO banner is Phil Foden here for the Champions League final. Aleti don't have one of themselves. Out come the two sides onto the field for the biggest game in European football, the Champions League final. Two of the top club sides from the world of football in Spain and England come out to go head-to-head. -head. Mr Ballon d'Or himself, Rodri, who's not played at all this season, he's not there. It is Alan Varela in there for Manchester City, a new signing. He's been there since January and he has been the Rodri replacement. That's our front line at the end of the line there. Lenormand, they've got Jimenez, Rinaldo in the back line. Jan Oblak, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. One of the best defensive sides in the world. And Atletico Madrid are in the Champions League final for, I think, maybe the second time in their uh, modern times. They didn't win in that time when they got to the final against Real Madrid. They're losing on penalties. Madrid pulling goals back in the last few minutes of the out. And Atleti, very disappointed with that one. We're looking to disappoint them again today and not show the sort of showing we showed against Chelsea back when City first made it to their first Champions League final. We know the Manchester City side line up in a 4-2-3-1. It is Vardy, Aldeas, Akanji and Lewis, the back four. Varela, Gundogan and Kevin De Bruyne in that midfield three. The captain, the front three, Haaland, Bernardo Silva and also Phil Foden. Some of these players who didn't start the last Champions League final 
starting this one. Yoshko Vardio wasn't there, of course, at the time. Rico Lewis didn't start the other one. Alan Varela. And there is the Atleti side. Jose Maria Jimenez, one of the top centre-backs in the world. He's not really reached the heights that was expected of him when he first came onto the scene. John McGinn has been signed, as well as Anderson Taliska. But Julian Alvarez, the former Manchester City man, is in this Atleti side. And he does start up top. So there is Diego Simeone's side. And it's going to be Alvarez, I think, on his own with Soloff on the bench with Raquel, mate. So our black starts in goal. A back three or five, it will be Ronaldo, Lenormand and Jimenez. And he's then Lino, Gallagher, Captain McGinn and Talisco in the midfield four. Thomas Lara and Llorente in behind Julian Alvarez. I think they'll be in the wide areas this Atleti side. For this massive Champions League final. Manchester City looking to complete the treble today with a win in the Champions League final. Atletico Madrid will be aggressive. They're here for one thing and one thing only. Like Manchester City to win the Champions League. Do everything they can to win that trophy. Nice done by Manchester City. Morella back into Gundogan. Good touches from Ilkay. Ilkay Gundogan over top here. Haaland around the far post here. Ronaldo with acrobatics to clear it away. Morella back onto Rico Lewis. But a good start by Manchester City. Letty sitting behind the ball here. Finds Alvarez. Here's Thomas Lamar. Manny McCanji makes a good challenge. City have it back again. But so far, Letty. They, they've only, they, they want to just counter-attack us really, Atletico Madrid. We know that. We know what Simeone's signs do. Alvarez. He's knowing pretty well here. Outnumbered on this far side is Rico Lewis. He needs his wing of an out to help him out. Doesn't do. Lamar with a bit of acceleration away from Ruben Diaz. He makes a challenge here, Diaz. It's a foul by Diaz, is it? It's a free kick, Atletico Madrid's way. That's what they're going to look for. Set pieces in those situations. Been very good for them. Talisca goes for goal. Well, that was a, a spectacular attempt by Anderson Taliska. Tries to put it in the top corner. Straight from the free kick. Doesn't even whip it into towards his attacking players. And it's up and over the bar. Around towards Vardio. Okay, Gundogan. Nice positioning from Rico Lewis here. Rico. And he plays on through to Haaland here. And Erling Haaland is in. And Erling Haaland lays it across to Phil Foden. Unselfish. Well dealt with by Aleti. Gundogan back out to the Reiner. What a start that could have been for City. And Taliska takes it off KDB with a heavy touch. And the counter's on here. And here's Alvarez. Fully amp. Ruben Diaz across to him. Nice challenge. Forward to Phil Foden. City open them up a little bit here. Haaland. De Bruyne. Foden. Back into Haaland again. That wide to Phil Foden one more time. Foden to the far post. Gundogan is in there. Ilkay Gundogan for the header. Nearly wins the header. Nearly scores it. Gundogan trying to win it back. Well played Thomas Lamar. Taliska. Here is Taliska again from the Saudi League player. And the Chinese League as well as Alvarez is played in here. Julian Alvarez. Good feet from Alvarez, but a better challenge from Manu Akanji. Brings it forward for City, Akanji. Gundogan. Akanji. Into Phil Foden here. Keeps it Foden. Well played, De Bruyne. Onto Foden. Back through to De Bruyne. De Bruyne can't control it. It rolls behind for a goal kick. Manchester City. Trying our best. We've got our most creative players in the field here. Best chance we create was through Erling, Car Erling Carland. Oh, good header by Ilkay Gundogan. Rico Lewis. Varela. Right across towards Vardio. De Bruyne. Good feet by De Bruyne. Crossing again. Hull is in there. Away by Aleti. Gundogan back out to Varela. Back into De Bruyne again. Vardio. In behind to Kevin De Bruyne. Chance again for De Bruyne. Across the near post to Haaland. And a, a step out by Jan Oblak gets it. Well, it's been all Manchester City. We had the better chances. You could say I tried to create the better chances. But so far, 0-0 in the Champions League final. A tenth final, as we expected in the first 45 minutes. Well, you can see the match facts here at half-time after 45 minutes played. Manchester City with pretty much 70% possession to the Aletis 30. 11-second ball recovery time compared to their 24. Shows how much City want to win it more. But shots-wise, Aleti with one shot to City's none. No shots really from either side uh, in that first half. Interceptions there, he's made 13 to our three. Tackles won five, but way more passes, way more tackles. City, a much better team. But unfortunately, the one shot has come from their free kick in that first 45. Back out to Rico Lewis. Back into Bernardo Silva. Good play. Bernardo across the box here. Somebody. Haaland or Jimenez or was in the way. But Haaland or Foden needed to be in there. Haaland Varela can't win that one. And they bypass the midfield now. Conor Gallagher. Kanji steps out. Here's Lino. It's Rico Lewis. Oh, Rico. Absolutely brilliant from Lewis. De Bruyne on towards Vardio. 
back into KDB. Nice touches. Gundogan. Haaland. Holds it up, Haaland. Spins. Fold him. De Bruyne, run him. De Bruyne in. Haaland is waiting. Poor ball by De Bruyne. Wide to Bernardo Silva. Oh, and he's quickly closed down here, Bernardo. Too easy. The counter's on. Nezirente. Angarella across. Puts a foot in. Falls. Lino against Rico Lewis. Rico with a great challenge and behind for a throw in. And it looks like Simeone is going to make a change of his own here. Raquel May comes on for Lino. It's a very attacking change on that left hand side up against Rico. And there is Raquel May making immediate impact here. Anyway, Kanji nicks it. Straight to Alvarez! Big save, Medicine. What a chance and back to him. Then Doku. So Bernardo Silva off. One of Pep Guardiola's favourite players comes off for Savinho in the Champions League final. Interesting change by Guardiola. Nick Gallagher. Alvarez, great challenge by Akanji. Diaz. De Bruyne. Space real Kai Gundogan here. Gundogan on the turn. Wide to Savinho. City finally got a bit of space in behind the defence of Aleti here. Savinho. Savinho. Savinho pulls the trigger. Great challenge on him. Brilliant challenge on him there as he went to pull a trigger. Space the other way for Savinho. Il Kai Gundogan will find Savinho. Troll for the opposition against Ronaldo here. Savinho. Played against him in La Liga. Savinho. Gundogan. Back inside Savinho. Savinho into Gundogan. Handball referee. Free kick Manchester City here. And the 77th minute of the Champions League final. Look, Kai Gundogan's over it. We're going to aim for Erling Carl and hope he gets there. Gundogan in. De Bruyne, it's fell to. Headed away. Varela against Lamar. Flicked on. Vardiol will get there down to Rico Lewis. Back to Vardiol. De Bruyne, Phil Fone's been quiet in today's game. Fold him. In behind to De Bruyne. Cross the box into Savinho. Pressing by City here, trying to win it high up the field, but we can't do. Against Ronaldo. Savinho passed him. Savinho still, and another sliding challenge. Brilliant on Savinho. By this time, Llorente. Ronaldo across can't get there, and a ball in behind here, and City are in trouble, and it's Julian Alvarez. And Alvarez is through here. And Alvarez dinks Edison, and Alvarez scores in the 83rd minute of the Champions League final. Manchester City's former striker comes back to haunt in the Champions League final in the 83rd minute. Savinho tackled. Edison beaten. And Alvarez scores. Where's Vardiol going, by the way? What a finish from Alvarez. In the Champions League final, Manchester City falls short to Aleti, perhaps. Through to Phil Foden. He's been quiet today, Foden. Nice feet by Foden. Brilliant from Foden. Foden still. Foden still. Tackle in the box there. Haaland's gone down. Hardly any chances great for Haaland. One early on. Varela in there. Down to De Bruyne. De Bruyne. De Bruyne! De Bruyne in the Champions League final! What a goal from the captain! What a finish in the Champions League final! Wow! 1-1. One, one. one of the big moments. The big players step up. And Manchester City's captain has stepped up here. What a finish from Kevin De Bruyne. 1-1. One, one. Wow. Headed down to KDB. One touch. Bang. Pulls the trigger. What a finish. On the biggest stage of them all. They say De Bruyne doesn't turn up. He is turned up in this Champions League final. Manchester City's captain. What a finish. Can I re reverse the substitutions? I would like to keep Ilkay Gundogan on. I'd like to keep Foden on as well. Doc is going to stay off for now. We're going to reverse those substitutions. What a finish from the Bruyne in the Champions League final. Manchester City won. Aleti won in two late goals. Level things up here. And it's now to Savinho. Down to Rico. Gundogan. Varela. On to the Bruyne. That is full time in the Champions League final. 90 minutes gone. Level at 1-1. Alvarez scored what I thought was going to, going to do us in the final. But well, Kevin De Bruyne in the big moment turns up. He falls from the edge of the box. What a strike in the final. And that means extra time in this one. Well, extra time underway here. And Pep Guardiola has made a change in the Champions League final. Off comes Rico Lewis at right back. And Phil Foden comes in. Alan Varela has gone to centre back. Oh, good tackle by Gundogan. I think I see Varela as a saw Mascarell type player. Doku. Oh, poor by Doku. His first involvement is giving the ball away. And the game feels a little bit expansive here. A little bit open. Oh, and Diaz has been beaten here. And Taliska's in. And Taliska hits one. Good save from Eddie. 
Back out to Raquel, mate. Gallagher, and a one back by Manny Kanju at right back. He's got physicality, but City there. That was poor. And to fold him. Gundogan, nice play by City. Ilkay Gundogan. Right to Doku. De Bruyne. De Bruyne in. Hold is there! Saved by Oblak. What a ball in by De Bruyne. Erling Carlin was there. His first real chance of the game at the end of the half. 1 1. And I thought for a second their harm was there at the far post to score. Second half, extra time yet to come. Spin on Gundawan. Flicked on here. Miller stays with him and a great talent challenge by Varela. He's been fantastic today. Foden. De Bruyne. Trouble for the opposition. De Bruyne. Big switcher player to Savinho. Savinho for City. Savinho. Savinho in the Champions League final! Savinho in the Champions League final! What a goal! 2-1 Manchester City. What a finish by Savinho. That is what you want from your player on the right wing. In the wide areas. Beats his man in the box. Puts it in the back of the net. An assist for De Bruyne. And in his debut season at Manchester City, Savinho just might have gone and scored. The winner in the Champions League final. Pass Ronaldo into the back of the net. 2-1 in the Champions League final. What a finish by Savinho. Who cups his ear the Brazilian. And gives City Lee in the Champions League final. His first goal in eight games in the Champions League. He hasn't been prolific in front of goal this season. But he scored the biggest goal of the Champions League. Varela steps out and wins it again. Kanji goes back to it. It's an Alan Varela at centre-back. Don't be surprised to see him use, that, use him there next season. Because he's been so solid there in today's game. And Manchester City now know. To keep the ball is what we have to do. Miller with a challenge, he takes him down. Now Kanji goes in there to put another challenge in on him. Referee plays on. Varela keeps chasing. Away from Varela in there again, he wins it, lost it. And now goes Raquel May through. Raquel May! 2-2. Two -two. Oh my word. We should have done so much better. Raquel May goes through. Diaz is off him. And Aleti make it 2-2 in the Champions League final. What a finish by Raquel, mate. Aleti level at 2-2 in extra time. Manchester City thought they'd won it. And we should have won it there. I mean, that's a bad mistake. Last chance alone for City. Kevin De Bruyne. A big ping out to Savinho. Last chance for City and last chance of the game. Savinho against Ronaldo. Savinho. Phil Foden. Away from Gallagher, fold him. Rise the challenges. Back out to Savinho. Off one and off another. Savinho. Doesn't cross it. Savinho still, and he's tackled in the end. Savinho on that far side. Referee blows the full time whistle. It is penalties in the Champions League final. I'm so frustrated with that Raquel May goal. Was it Morella's fault for coming out from centre back? I, I don't know. Kanji didn't make the right foul. Penalties it is to decide the Champions League winners. And I am so, so nervous. Wow. Well, that is going to be our penalty order. We're going to start with Phil Foden, then Haaland, then De Bruyne and Ilkay Gundogan and finish with Edison. If we have to go to more than five, it will be Varela, Savinho, Vardio, then Akanji, then Doku, then finally Ruben Diaz. As for Aleti, their five main takers are going to be Soloff, Kilshoy, who's come off another striker, come off the bench, Lamar, Gallagher and Yerente. If not, then it will be John McGinn, Raquel May, the goal scorer, Ronaldo Jimenez, Jan Oblak, and so, um, also um, Lenormand. He means no Alvarez has taken a penalty. He has come off and he's been substituted off by Simeone. So first penalty to be taken by Phil Foden. No top left-hand corner. Phil Foden is saved by Oblak. Oh, my word. Soloff. Scores. This could be really bad. Erling Carland. Bottom right-hand corner. Haaland scores his great penalty from Erling Haaland. Here is Kilshoy. Sends Edison the wrong way. De Bruyne. Bottom left-hand corner. Kevin De Bruyne puts it in just. Another, cut, another one. Lamar. Got to save one. Lamar sends Edison the wrong way. We've got to save one, City. Gundogan. No top right. Ilkay Gundogan dispatches his penalty, but Phil Foden missed his. Gallagher. Oh, Edison goes the right way, doesn't save it. Edison has to score this. 
Ah, oh, balls it up. I've made a mistake. I've made a mistake. The treble dream is over. I rushed it. I didn't take my time. And Manchester City are double winners. Two trophies. FA Cup and Premier League. A fifth Premier League in a row. With that prestigious Champions League. We've thrown it away. In the Champions League final. Atletico Madrid finally come out on top in a penalty shootout. And Manchester City fail at the last. I'm so frustrated with that. I would have actually preferred to win the Champions League and not the Premier League this season. Because City have won it once in their history. But we throw it away in the final. And Kevin De Bruyne, he won't lift that Champions League trophy in what could be his final game for Manchester City. We don't lift the Champions League trophy. And I'm going to watch this. Just shortly. To understand the pain these players feel. To understand the mistakes he made. Simeone against Guardiola is never good in the Champions League final. And Atletico Madrid are champions of Europe. Deservedly so, they won it. But we throw it away. That Riquelme goal will haunt me. That penalty Foden missed. That Edison missed where I rushed it. We made mistakes. But we'll be back next season to try and win that trophy once again. That competition once again. But I am so, so disappointed with that. Wow. That has hit me like, like no other, no other mistake in this series. Well, there's a trophy parade for the Manchester City players as the bus goes through the streets of Manchester. No treble this time. The treble is one of the most impossible dreams to achieve again, and we will try it again without a doubt. But City are Premier League winners, and we are FA Cup winners. City are double winners, something they couldn't do last season under Pep Guardiola. This year they've done it, and they can celebrate knowing a very successful season. And knowing they were one step away from the treble win. We can't be too disheartened by that. We gave it our all as a team. And we'll be back next season. We'll be back to try and win it again. And next year we'll have one big difference in the side. We'll have Rodri back. Well, the pictures of Julian Alvarez celebrating his Champions League final win over Manchester City. He's won back to uh, two Champions League finals now. Not back to back ones, but two Champions League finals now. He's one of the most decorated footballers of all time. And he's done it again at Atletico Madrid. Haaland's been named Premier League Player of the Month, but, I mean, everything's on that one. It's time for our end-of-season review, our end-of-season big roundup, and then we'll see where everything goes from there for future episodes, of course. This series will not end here. Season 2 will be back, and we want that Champions League trophy. So before we get into the end-of-season awards and we start rounding up all the leagues from around the world and this season in general, we do want to look at our player stats for this season. Stats have our top three most used players this year with Phil Foden with 56 appearances, Erling Haaland with 54, and Joshko Vardiol with 53 appearances. They're our top three most used players. Moving down, we've got Kanji with 52, Edison with 49, Savinho with 47, Luis with 46, Bernal Silva with 46, Ilkay Gungo with 46, and Jack Willis with 46 as well. But let's have a look at goals mostly. That's the important stat, isn't it, really? Erling Haaland in 54 appearances, Manchester City got 51 goals and 7 assists in that time. Kyogo Funiashi, 20 games, 18 goals and 1 assist. And Haaland actually was on the side with 25 clean sheets. Phil Foden, 56 appearances, 10 goals and 13 assists. These are our top um, performing players. Bernal Silva, 46 appearances, 7 goals and 8 assists. Savinho, 47 appearances, 7 goals and 7 assists. He is still working towards being a better player. Now Jeremy Doku, only 6 goals and 5 assists in 44 appearances. We loaned out Claudio Echivede, who's had a spectacular loan at West Ham United. He's been in the Premier League Team of the Month. He's been named Premier League Player of the Month. He's been nominated for Premier League Player of the Month, I think, multiple times since that move in January on loan. 16 games to West Ham United, 6 goals and 3 assists. What a loan move that has been for him. And at 19 years of age, he's got to be part of the City setup, I think, next season. Osbob, 19 games, 6 goals and 3 assists in that time. Really good return, like Claudio Echivede. And he has grown to 78 rated now. Kevin De Bruyne has decreased 40 games this season for the club captain, 5 goals and 10 assists. Ilkay Gundogan has returned to the side, 46 games, 5 goals and 8 assists. 
Joshka Vardiol, 27 clean sheets when Vardiol was on the field, 53 appearances, 4 goals and 1 assist. Matthias Nunes, 4 goals and 3 assists in 25 games. Grealish got 12 assists, which is, I think, one of our top assisters. If we have a look, uh, we'll have a look afterwards anyway so we don't lose track. 2 goals and 46 uh, games. Rico Lewis, 1 goal and 2 assists in 46 games as well. He's 84 rated now, and he's definitely our number one right, that without a doubt. Kovacic played 36 games for us, one goal and two assists in that time. Callum Plutz has played 31 games while on loan. He's 77 rated, we're looking to move him on. Isakabor is in a very, uh, you know, respectable low move, 75 rated now. Uh, Devin Mabama, uh, 68 rated on loan at Mulder. Uh, Jan Kuto will make a move permanently away from the club, so we don't need to look at him. 11 appearances he made for them in the Champions League anyway. Luke Mbete, 64 rated. Callum Doyle, 76. He's grown in that time for Norwich. Emile Lawrence has grown to 67 rated on loan. Finley Burns to 66. Maximo Pedron, 77 rated. Another player that I do believe should be in the first team setup starting next season. Kaiki, 68 rated while on loan. Kian Brecken, 64 rated. And then we've got Rory Lavery, a young player who's come through 64. Katongo's grown to 71. He's one that I want to keep an eye on. So Soho to 67. Josh Wills from Esbrand playing 10 or 5 Premier League games, 3 Carabao Cup games for Bournemouth. He's grown to 71 rated. Joel and Dalio looks to make that move permanent to PSV. I know in 69 rated. And back into the actual first team players now that haven't played many games for us. Scott Carson made no appearance to the club this season. 59 rated. We hope for him to stick around for one more year. Kyle Walker. 38 games, no goals and one assist. He's on his way out. Stefan Ortega, 84 rated. I can't see him wanting to stay at Manchester City because we've 14 games, we've got seven clean sheets, but 14 games is not enough for a goalkeeper of his quality. Nathan Ake, 13 games, no goals and uh, no assists. And then finally, we've got the injured Roderick working his way back. Obviously, no appearance this season, still 91 rated. James McAtee, in 12 appearances of the club this season, got four assists. He needs to get more game time, I believe, next season. Uh, Christy McFarlane, who joins in January, made two appearances for the club. Uh, Nico Riley made seven appearances for the club, getting one assist in that time. Caden Braithwaite, he's grown to 60 rated, only made one appearance this season. Uh, Fahad Alpha Ruprecht made only two appearances this season, no goals and no assists in that time. Looking to loan to these younger players out. The same goes for Jacob Wright, only six appearances, but he's continuing development relatively well. John Stones, 37 appearances for the club this season. No goals and one assist. He played holding midfield. He played right back. He played centre back. A very good player for the club. Everyone loves John Johnny Stones. Alan Varela, signing January. He's grown from 81 to 83 in that time. Big money move. At only 23 years of age, he's going to develop into some sort of some player. In 22 games for the club, no goals, but seven assists and 12 clean sheets. Manny McKenzie, 52 appearances for the club. He was our standout defender this year. No goals and one assist, but 21 clean sheets in the field. And then five, final two players. Ruben Diaz, 45 appearances this year. No goals, no assists, 15 clean sheets. Hasn't been actually as good as I thought he should be. And then finally, Edison, who's been one of our standout players. He saved as many a times in goal. 49 games for the club. No goals, no assists, but 22 clean sheets. The top in clean sheets was Josh Govardio on the field. Erling Carland, Phil Foden, Rico Lewis and Edison, the top. Um, five there of players when on the field we get a clean sheet and that tells you all you need to know about that so that's the stats of the season of the players let's have a little bit of a, a roundup of the what we did in the Premier League and so on as, as you already know but the Premier League top goal scorers and things like that and then it's time to get into the end of season awards Premier League top goal scorer was Erling Carl with 38 games of goals in 37 appearances meaning he does shatter his goal record of 36 he'll look to try and break that even more next season 38 goals in 37 games, more goals than he actually played, uh, which is ridiculous. Werner, João Pedro, Watkins and Spurs is Hyung Min Son in that top five. Uh, Son not too far off. The top in assist in the Premier League is out in the reset with 11. We have our own player there in Jack Grealish in fourth place with eight. Top in clean sheets, of course, Edison, only one clear of uh, Vicario, the Spurs goalkeeper, with 18 clean sheets in 36 appearances. Top in red cards, Kamado with two, Debron, got one himself. Top in yellow cards, Gabriel Martinelli with 10. Um, as we go on to the Emirates FA Cup, the top goal scorer in that competition was Kyogo Fidiashi. Since he joined in January, he got 12 goals and only 6 appearances. Two goals a game for Kyogo in that competition. And Ibrahim got 3 assists, second place tied with Barry Bannon. Clean sheet, Stefan Ortega top with 4 a standout performer as well. Into the Carabao Cup, or the UEFA Super Cup, we don't need that. Into the Carabao Cup, it was top in goals, Ollie Watkins. We didn't win that competition. It was Aston Villa who went on to win it. But in the Champions League, top goal scorer is Victor Jokeres. 15 goals and 16 appearances. They had a really good season in sports and got to the semi-final. I can't see him being there. Alvarez, 14 and 14. Haaland got 10 and 13. And Bappe with 10 as well. Top and assist, Pote. 
You can see how good Spurs have been. Ilkay Gundogan and De Bruyne are in there for Manchester City. Two players who performed well this season, but are getting a lot older. And topping clean sheets is Jan Black with five in 17. That is the roundup until we get into the, the leagues around the world, and then it's time for the end of season awards. Well, we know that Everton were relegated from the Premier League alongside Ipswich Town. I can't remember who the other one was now, but. Um, Coming up next season, Burnley are coming back to the Premier League. It looks like Sheffield on goal difference outdo Luton Town to come back. It's between Luton, Norwich, Leeds and West Brom in that playoff to see who come up. But Sheffield and Burnley are coming back to the Premier League once again. As for the Women's Super League, Manchester City win it. City Women's win the Premier League like we do. And a win for Manchester City clear of Arsenal. League 1, that was won by Paris Saint-Germain as expected. Really, really clear winners. Luis Enrique's side so far ahead than anyone else in AS Monaco. Into the Bundesliga. And who would that be won by? The Bundesliga. Well, that's the Indian Super League. The Bundesliga is won by Bayern. No. Dortmund finally win the Bundesliga again. Nuri Sahin leads them to a two-point clear win over Vincent Kompany's Bayern. Leverkusen and Xabi Alonso side down in third. Leipzig in fourth make up the Champions League spots. Congratulations to Dortmund for being back winners again. Serie A was won by Juventus. They outdo into my two points. Uh, Atalanta finished third. Wow. And Roma in fourth. Napoli down in sixth. Milan down in seventh. Eredivisie was won by PSV Eindhoven. They've done really well. 84 points. Ajax down in fourth. They're just not the side they once were. Are the Ajax? In Portugal, I assume Sporting won the league. They didn't. Well, FC Porto win the Europa League. Sporting gets to the semi-final of Champions League. Sporting after losing um, in halfway through the season to Manchester United mean that Ruben Amor inside might get to the semi-final of Champions League, but they don't win the Portuguese League. It's won by FC Porto. And finally, the sides with the leagues we're looking at, I mean, we can look at the Scottish Premier League, which was obviously won by Celtic. Only two points clear of hearts, however. Um, Al Nasser, Cristiano Ronaldo's side win the Saudi Pro League. And I think La Liga is the only last one we want to look at. Who wins the Liga? It is Real Madrid. A 100-point season from Real Madrid. Way ahead of Barcelona. Villarreal in third. They've been amazing, Villarreal. The likes of Bayern are in that Villarreal side, who, who's been fantastic for them. They finished third, but Madrid, top of the table. 100 points for them. Congratulations to them. But they didn't do so well in the Champions League. And that's a really, really um, competitive table. Lariel down in eighth. Athletic Club in 7th, Valencia 6th, Atletico Madrid winning the Champions League, only got into the Europa Conference League, but they will play Champions League football next season after winning the Champions League. Betis in 4th, Villarreal 3rd, Barcelona in 2nd. I wonder who got relegated in La Liga out of interest. It is Alaves, Celta Vigo and Las Palmas. Well, that finishes the end of season roundup, where we obviously know where we finish in the Premier League. If it will show it, I'm sure it will show us the Premier League. For some reason, I can't, I can't view the Premier League. But it's time for... The end of season awards. So the end of season awards time. We're going to kick things off with the young player of the season award. Our nominees were Rico Lewis. We've got Joshko Vardiol and Oscar Bob. Oscar Bob getting six goals and three assists in 19 appearances. Rico Lewis getting in 45 appearances, a lot of appearances at the club this season. Two uh, assists and one goal. And as for Joshko Vardiol, 52 appearances, the most appeared young player in this side. Four goals and one assist. And all of those players perform really well. Lewis and Vardy are more sort of key players to the side. Oscar, of course, missed the first three months of the season injured, but did start to build his way into the side. And I think finishing is something he needs to work on, certainly, if he's going to be a starter in this team. But the Young Player Season Award goes to Oscar Bob. You guys voted. I think around 52% of you guys were in favour of Oscar Bob being the Manchester City Young Player of the Season in RFC 25 career mode in season one, won the 24-25 season. And congratulations to Oscar Bob on that one. On to now the underrated player of the season. Where the nominees were Manu Akanji, a centre-back, Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne. De Bruyne got nine assists and four goals in 39 appearances, but those all came in important big moments. Bernardo Silva played a key role with De Bruyne out injured in 45 appearances. Bernardo Silva getting seven goals and eight assists. And as for Manuel Kanji, one assist, no goals in 51 appearances, and most appeared player in the nominees. However, he was a really key player at the back, and he saved Manchester City and our team time and time again in winning games throughout the season. So the underrated player of the season for season one, the award goes to Kevin De Bruyne. You guys feel that his important goals and important assists were massive. And congratulations to Kevin De Bruyne winning that award. And it's on to our next award. The signing of the season award. Of course, one of these signings was made by Manchester City in real life, which was Savinho. The other two we signed in January. We've got Savinho. 
46 appearances, 6 goals and 7 assists for the club in his first season, which is not bad at all return. But we want to get out to sort of 10 goals and 10 assists if we can do. Alan Varela who joined January, who became the Roger replacement after his ACL injury. 6 assists and no goals, but what a massive, massive role he played in 21 games. And then we have, back up to Erling Haaland, new striker Kyogo Furiashi signed from Celtic. 20 appearances, 18 goals and 1 assist. Every single one of these players made massive impacts on this Manchester City side. So who is the winner? Who did you guys think was the most important signing of the season for this Manchester City side? Well, you guys voted for... Savinho. He is the winner. Savinho takes the young player of the season award. He could have done. He could have been nominated for that, but we took him out of there. We put him in for the sign of the season award, and he went and took that award for himself. Personally, I thought Alan Varela would win it because of the impact he had. Kyogo Fidiashi was fantastic as well. But you guys said no. Savinho signed by Manchester City in real life. He is the sign of the season. And the next award needs just the introduction of myself saying, here are the three nominees for the amazing goal of the season award. Grealish, Gundogan, De Bruyne, De Bruyne, De Bruyne scores again. Since coming back from injury, how perfect did this mind be? Absolutely brilliant, 1-0 City lead over Villa, and it's Kevin De Bruyne again. The man of the moment at the moment for City. Finds him, and with the outside of him, De Bruyne bends it into the far corner. What a finish from KDB. Yusuf Mercado as a marker. Round him. Martinez can't stop it. Manchester City lead. And it's Kevin De Bruyne. Edge of the box to Vardy, Elliot. Yoshko Vardy! What a strike by Yoshko Vardy. That was absolutely fantastic from the fullback. Into the back of the net for 2 0. What a finish from City's defender. Well, he's pushed into midfield today. Into a false pullback roll. One touch. Pull the trigger bang. What a strike from Vardyov. That is fantastic from City's pullback. Folding into him. Just takes the touch of the studs and then he just pulls the trigger. Sees the space, sees the chance. No chance of Pickford. What a hit by Vardyov. Out the far post. What a goal. What a goal from Erling Haaland. Come on. 2-0 Manchester City. What a finish from Erling Haaland that is. Tapping the Manchester City badge as well. Falling from De Bruyne. Acrobatic from Erling Haaland. He gets his second goal of the season. 2-0 at London Stadium. What a performance here from Manchester City. De Bruyne in. Haaland with a spectacular. Look at this for a finish. Wow. Look at that for a finish. Insane from Erling Haaland. And you guys voted Kevin De Bruyne's fantastic outside the boot goal against Aston Villa in the Champions League was the winner of your goal of the season. I thought actually Erling Haaland might come out and start with these spectacular acrobatics, but no, you guys voted in favour of Kevin De Bruyne. And now it's time for our final award and the most prestigious award of the season, the player of the season for season one here in FC 25 career mode. The nominees were Erling Haaland, who played 53 games, 51 goals and seven assists in that time. The number's fantastic. Phil Foden, our second nominee in 55 appearances, 10 goals and 13 assists, playing a very key role in what City achieved in winning the double. And then finally, goalkeeper Edison, 22 clean sheets in 48 appearances. He saved City time and time again defensively with some brilliant, spectacular performances on the biggest stage. And that same goes to Phil Foden, Neil and Khan. Those three, rightfully so, are nominees, deservedly so, the nominees, the three nominees for a player's season. And you guys voted for for as your player of the season as Erling Haaland 51 goals Erling Haaland scores in all competitions one more than his record of 50 um, which he set in his first season at the club and he is our player of the season for season one season two is coming soon and that is something I'm excited for because big changes are coming to this Manchester City side please like the video if you're already please do subscribe to the channel if you are new and consider joining the We Are Members Club to see episodes early and extended we'll see you guys next time.